Hey, Matt here with the Jester TV, and I just wanted to jump in here really, really quick and let you know about a brand new community feature inside of Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out. After you sign into your membership at adjustertvplus.com, click on the word community in the upper right hand of the screen. Once there, you can read everything that's been posted, you can ask your own questions, or you can post up your wins so that everybody can celebrate with you. But Matt, why should I bother with the Adjuster TV Plus community when I can just be in the Facebook group? Well, first of all, you have to be a member of Adjuster TV Plus to even have access to the community. And that comes with all the self-paced video trainings, you know, the Xactimate and Symbility trainings, which Symbility training is coming very soon, scoping demonstrations, customer interaction demos, damage ID videos, general estimating videos, exclusive live stream trainings, and all the other job aids that you need to really crush it as a property IA and build a career that lasts. Also, we'll no longer be posting job announcements in the Adjuster TV private Facebook group. Those are only gonna show up inside of the Adjuster TV Plus members only community. And not only that, but we're partnering up with IA firms and other third party training outfits to bring you even more advanced training including IICRC water mitigation training and advanced policy trainings. And finally, where else are you gonna get your practice claims assignments? One of the new features that's coming up soon for Adjuster TV Plus is that based on the self-paced video trainings, we'll start assigning claim scenario homework. Now you can do these on your own, but every month we'll go through the assignment in a live stream. And if you're brave, we'll do a live file review of your work. It sounds pretty cool to me. I say it all the time that you have to practice. Well, we decided to put together something a little bit more formal for you that's based on real world claims. So check it out. If you're already a member of Adjuster TV Plus, you already have access to the community. If you are not a member, what are you waiting for? When you say high probability, yeah. we're talking like, I mean, it's, yeah. you know, high. 300 people show up and 15 of them are left standing. <laughs> yeah. If you can get that assessment and you can work with a mentor, then you're head and shoulders above most of the people because you know what you already know and it's, it's verified, it's validated. Here's what you know. Now, here's where you don't know. You and your mentor can work together to get you that part of the pie and you can move forward. You're watching Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by Paysetter Claim Service. Download the remote work guide at adjustertv.com slash paysetter and by Adjuster TV Plus. Advanced scoping and estimating training videos for independent adjusters. Ride along with us at adjustertvplus.com. You hear all the time on social media that NFIP flood claims are great money and that it's a great way to go as a field adjuster because hey, you don't have to climb roofs, right? You probably also hear that when there's a major hurricane, there are often a lot of flood claims. Name storms like Katrina, Harvey, Irma, Ike, Sandy, I mean, the list goes on. Even unnamed storms can produce floods. You may have even heard that major destructive flooding can occur from as little as three days of continuous rain in an area. For example, storms parking themselves over the upper Midwest and just raining for days on end. If you're interested in learning more about flood and getting trained to handle flood claims, then you need to contact my friend Charles over at Colonial Claims for this unique recruiting opportunity. And you can reach him at Charles booker at colonialclaimsadjuster.com or you can text or call 330-439-9074. In case you didn't know, Colonial Claims is the largest flood claim processor in the business and they're aggressively expanding their roster this year. In fact, right now is your chance to get on board with the best in flood and make a boatload of money playing in the water. Again, that's charles.booker at colonialclaimsadjuster.com. And Booker is spelled B as in boy, U, C as in cat, H, E as in Edward, R. And don't forget to let them know that Adjuster TV sent you. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. And I'm here with Dion Mosier from a little town and it sounds like North Central Arkansas. Um, he's an adjuster who's been, uh, kind of got his start back five or so years ago and um, wants to have a conversation about um, sort of his journey. And then kind of like, we're gonna have a, a chat about how we can, you know, he could share his experience 
uh, and in, a, in hopes of helping other new folks who are just getting into the industry to sort of like narrow that path um, from, you know, just finding out, hearing about it and then getting it kind of d dialed into a laser focus on, you know, how do you get going? How do you get on rosters? How do you get work and how do you crush it? So Dion, welcome to the show. And uh, if you me. want to give us a little bit of a, um, you know, kind of an intro on yourself and where you're from and uh, what your experience has been so far. All right. Well, thank you, Matt, for having me on. I appreciate it. And starting with my experience, I was in the military from 83 to 2004 when oh. I retired. Thank you for and your service, then, sir. Absolutely. My pleasure. I uh, went straight to work for FedEx, worked in their sales department. I uh, was district sales manager for them. And then when they moved my job to Dallas, Texas, I decided to stay in Arkansas. So I, I went out on my own. So I'm, I'm retired from the military now. I started buying rental houses back in 2010, remodeling them. Uh, so I had the construction background. I've got uh, Moses remodeling and TND construction. So all that all that experience I already had. Not a lot of people have that at you know 30 something years old. So right. Uh, right. happened to call a buddy of mine that I didn't even know he was an adjuster. Uh, I knew he was in insurance. That's all I knew. Didn't know uh, insurance adjusting was a job until he told me. And short, long story short, eight days after I talked to him about it, I was in Florida running claims on an emergency license. I'd yep. never run a claim before. He took me out, showed me how to scope. He, he's got a, a an envelope like this. I don't know if everybody uses those or what. Yep. He said, follow that envelope. You won't miss anything and make sure you write everything down. At night, he would run his, or during the day, he'd run his claims. I'd run mine. I closed, I don't know, 75 claims with his help inside a three-week period. Wow. Now that, I mean, wow. I don't, that has not happened in a three-week period in a long time. Right. But- I mean, he was there pushing me though. And uh, so at night he would write my, or I'd write my claims, call him about 15 times, interrupt him while he's writing his claims and come back. So I got kind of an unconventional beginning in the independent property adjusting life. Yeah. I would yeah, not turn yeah, back yeah. to save me. I wouldn't turn back for you. <laughs> Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. I mean, it's, I wouldn't either. I mean, it's, I, I think everybody has sort of a, you know, in, in a lot of ways it's similar. Um, but sounds like Irma was your first event, um, which was a big, big one and 75 claims. So were you doing like the tile roofs? Yes. A bunch of those. Yeah, so. that, that was, that was a bunch, that was a learning experience there in of itself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you, so you probably did pretty well on that, you know, that it, first. It was, it was a very good first storm. Yeah. It, it definitely set the bar high for the rest <laughs> well, of my deployment. And you know what? Let's talk about that because you, you've had, you know, you, you're, you've got going on five plus years of experience now. Um, Hurricane Irma was, I will say, and maybe you disagree, maybe your experience has been different, but I think that Irma was a fluke as far as like, you know, the, the, the conditions that, that occur to make that hurricane as lucrative as it was are not common. So you had a Harvey that came along. It was a huge storm and everybody and their mom deployed to Harvey. And this was after a couple of years where there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of work. So people were dropping out of this. So we didn't have a whole lot of people to begin with. Um, right. And then I don't know, I can't, I don't know how many weeks after Harvey hit Irma hits and there's nobody. Right. So the, the fee schedules were all like, you know, through the roof and that all that tile roof stuff. I mean, I, I, I didn't, I did file review, um, remotely on Irma cause I just couldn't get down there, but I've heard I have so many stories, man. It was it probably would have been worth it to just <laughs> figure out how to get down anyway, but to, to talk I'll say a little it was bit a about great learning experience or a great environment to learn sure. a, a lot of different things at one time. Yeah. And you're probably like, man, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, <laughs> but tell me, tell me a little bit about, you know, your experience after Irma. And if you got any kind of a reality check, like how, how did things go after that? 
Okay, well, after I come back from Irma, of course, I was on emergency license. So I had to get my education. I had to get my license from home state. And then I followed that up with, I don't know, 12, 13 more states, the common states. Um, in 2018, really didn't do a lot because I was concentrating solely on getting my education and everything under my belt to make me more effective for when I did go. Uh, 2019, had small employment and mostly um, daily claims. 2020, despite the pandemic and all the bad conditions that were going on then, uh, was great for me as far as work-wise. I spent three, four months on the road, and you know that's that's plenty for me because you know I'm I'm 56 years old, uh, retired army, and I've got four companies running at the same time that I've got other people running for me to keep a pulse on. So uh, 20, 2021, lots of deployments, and I've already had one this year. Uh, so uh, it's it definitely an ebb and a flow. Sure, sure. But sure, sure. but your uh the kind of fee bills <laughs> that you were seeing on Irma, you probably haven't. I mean you may you don't have to be specific, but I'd I'd be curious. Uh, um definitely not the level of Irma. Uh okay. I do have some good companies I work for. And each company is gonna be different. You know right. that as well as I do. Um and the percentages are gonna be different uh for depending on your um, abilities. If right. they know that you can get in there and knock them out and you've got that reputation in the field, then they'll probably pay you a better percentage. And yeah. And, I, and nobody told me up front. Right. You know. <laughs> well, yeah. And not every company will, will negotiate on the percentage, but a lot will. And I think if they, yes. if they perceive that you're a, a really, really high value adjuster that you produce, you know, you have, you have great cycle times, you, you put together a really solid file. And if you have a lot of construction experience, you're probably gonna do a pretty good file. And, and you got good customer service. Person who's a business owner, you kind of don't have a choice, you know, <laughs> to be a kind well, of- If a, you wanna be open more to a year. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, so I guess it, it, to backtrack just a little bit, I don't wanna give the impression that, you know, you could make, you only, people only make good money on Irma and everything else stinks. It's that Irma was like so, like such a high, high bar that you know the everything else you know is still really good i guess i should say that it, it's really it's a really good life yeah. you um and i'm on a lot of different uh, chat rooms and everything else so i see a lot of new people coming in asking the same questions yep. uh, and that's what prompted when you sent me the email uh that's what prompted the topic of how do we get these people from hearing about it to be in a working, steady working IA. Sure, uh, sure. So, yeah, so you can let's... you can feast or famine in this. One hundred percent. So let's talk a little bit about your experience and like, you know, being somebody who's who's got more than a couple of deployments under the belt and you've got you know multiple and you, and you had you know the wisdom and the patience to to take a break because you saw what you you you, you knew which. You saw that there's stuff that you know that you don't know, right? On Irma, right? And then you said, you know what? This is, sounds like a good deal. I could take a break and get quality training, get licenses, get certifications. You know, start to try to build relationships with IA firms, etc. And then jump back in when I've got all my gear ready and I've got, you know, you can hit the ground running instead of like hit the ground on your face, which is what a lot of people do, even <laughs> on their second deployments. Yeah. Um, so kind of maybe, you know, give us a kind of in a nutshell, like based on your experience and what you've learned, um, what what's a good path for uh, somebody who has just heard about it and they want to build a career and have a, have a great career five years in. Want to work from home? I thought that might get your attention. I'll cut to the chase here and tell you that the IA firm Paysetter Claim Service frequently has work from home opportunities for the field and also for desk work, which let's be honest, really just means work at home in your PJs. Still wanna work in the field though? Paysetter's Evo platform is fully integrated with Hover. It is the best of the app-based claims handling systems out there right now. 
Technology is moving faster than ever and Pavesetter is right there at the cutting edge. We put together a free guide to maximizing your productivity while working at home in your pajamas, along with a link to apply to this dynamic firm. And you can find both at adjustertv.com slash Pacesetter. And that's, that's gonna vary a lot on what their current situation is. Of course, if you've got kids living at home and, and a wife, um, thank God I have got a wife that is independent and sure herself and she can handle everything. My kids are grown. So um, to someone with a young family or, or any other situation, I would say really pray about and think about before you jump into this. I would not quit my current job and think I'm going to make a million dollars in adjusting because it may or may not happen in the first one or two years. Right. It is possible to make a lot of money. You may, it, you know, we, we've been having quite a few storms here recently and you know, there's a lot of work. Um, so I would definitely say don't quit your day job until you have a good grasp on what this is going to take. Uh, don't be afraid to take chances. Find a mentor. And and your your program is a great resource. The thing I like best about your 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 program, you speak in everyday terms, and you break things down to where they're easy to digest in bite sized increments. And you've got a lot of things out there that they can go watch. Uh, get all the all the education you can get there's you know x1 you can get the trial version poke around on it to learn the tools yep. reach out to yeah. your adjust uh, tpas your adjusting firms and see if they have any in-person adjusting classes coming up that's what i'm doing for my son uh, and he and i are going to go to in person i may learn some more stuff that i don't know from the last five years you never know. I'm always sure. up for learning. Uh, but for him, I'm bringing him along with me, and he's got the the ability to go with me out on the road to get the experience, and then he'll get his license, start running his own claims. And but I can't do that for everyone, so that's why I want to talk to you. Yeah, sure. Um, so, what sort of an expectation are you giving to your son as far as you know? how soon he'll be able to get work and, and get through that work. Cause like, like you said, I mean, calling somebody up 15 times at night to, to with it, everybody does it. And you have to have, yes. you have to have people there to, to, to lean on resources that are willing to say, yeah, man, you got, you know, I'm going to be working, but you got questions, call me, email me, whatever. I'll, I'll help you out as best I can. So what's, what sort of expectations are you, are you giving to him as far as like from, the starting line to the, the, you know, getting down the, the racetrack, like how long? Right. Well, what I've take? laid out for him, and of course, being 20, it'll be 21 in March. He's like, let's go get them. You know, I learn easy. I pick things up quick, Dad. Let's just get it out. You know, and I told him, look, you're going to pump the brakes a little bit. You're going to go to this education with me. You're going to go on the road with me. You're going you're gonna to learn the scoping. You're going to learn the systems. You're going to learn how to read estimating standards. You're going to have to learn how to read policy. All that takes time. So he'll work on a percentage with me, and he'll do a year to a year and a half with me as I evaluate him and get his licenses. Once he's got his home state license and a couple other, then he can start running his claims while I run my claims. We'll come together at night just like my mentor did me. I'll be there to answer questions as he goes through it. It's one of those things that the more you do it, the more you understand it. And yep. that, that was one of the hard things for me was everybody says, get on rosters, get on rosters, get on rosters. It was very confusing to me because every insurance company seems to have their own estimating standards and their own profiles that you have to, in order to bounce back and forth between two or three profiles, that can get confusing real fast and mess it up and get you a bad reputation. You know, so that's kind of what I've laid out for him. Okay. Uh, any advice for for new folks who, you know, maybe they don't know anybody in the industry? Um, having that kind of a mentorship, I mean, especially if a person's willing to be patient, like I said, I mean, that's 
I, I think that's that's really important. Um, but you know, any advice for how somebody can find a, a mentor without being their son or <laughs> brother-in-law? Or right, right. Because not everyone has that ability. Yeah. Um, I would I would reach out to my local insurance agents, start a conversation. A lot of them have been in the business forever. Um, emailing people like you, getting on your program, just listening to the different IE paths and and everything else. There's there's great tips in there. And geography has a lot to do with it. If you're in a small town like me, you don't have a lot of different insurance companies, but you you probably have one or two within driving distance. Uh, that's a good place to start. You know, um, you can talk to an auto guy. You know, if there's an auto uh, adjuster around, you know, talk to your construction people who writes their estimates. How'd they get started? You know, cause it don't have to be an IA to mentor you. Most of your contractors use the same programs as IAs, you know, and you get different viewpoints from that way. Yeah, no, don't that be makes, afraid to ask. That, that's, uh, that's actually really good advice. And I think going into an agent's office in particular, because they probably know, um, you know, the local staff adjuster in the area, and maybe you can't necessarily, you know, um, ride along with the staff adjuster or whatever, but the staff adjuster, right. they probably have to assign, you know, out of territory claims to an IA. Like, you know, when I was a staff right. adjuster, I had to do that. And they may be like, oh, well, you know what? There's actually a couple of guys that, uh, you know, they, they live about an hour south of you. And their IAs I use all the time, and they're, they're, they seem super nice. So it's it's networking basically, right? So you're, you know, exactly. And and I networking think uh, yeah, a, a big piece. You know, the construction thing we talk about it. Um, it's it's a challenging part to our particular industry because not everybody has the benefit of working for or owning their own construction company. Um, but you know, I would even say like people will say. I just, just thought of this. Um, they're like, people will say, well, that's what you know, I love about your mind, Matt. It <laughs> never shuts off. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it's like people will say, you know, you go get a job at, as, a, as a staff adjuster at a big carrier. Right. And let them train you and let them, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. On the job training, whatever, which I think there's a little bit of merit to that, but at the same time, it costs the, the carrier, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars to recruit and train people. Right. Because, right, um, right. you know, they're, they're providing this, there's a lot of staff that's involved with getting you because they'll help you get your licenses. They'll get you set up in their, their computers and everything. So they have buildings full of people that are there to help you. Right. And it, it all costs money. Um, the company car, all that stuff. Um, right. it, I think it would almost be in some ways, probably easier and better to do a little bit more like what you're saying to do. And that is, you know, you could ride along with somebody who's an estimator at a construction company, um, or you could spend that 18 months, get a job at service master or like a water remediation company. Um, cause you're going to, you know, especially if you want to do daily claims, it's going to be all water claims. And if you, if you're yes. a tech, right on doing a lot of those water things and going in, all right, you know, the, whoever's running the, the that job, this is how many fans we need in here. We're going to use the, this many D hues. we got to put up this, right. you know, plastic. we got to do all this stuff. Here's how, what we say to the homeowner. Then if you, in, you want to trans, and it, you know, it's a good, probably a good paying job. I don't know how much it pays. So I can't I'm, say that. I'm assuming it is. It's yeah. I'm making it. It should be if it's not. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, but then yeah, maybe after 18 months doing that, you, you know, put in your notice or whatever, and you transition over to becoming an IA, you know, after getting some other like IA specific training and, you know, networking and, and doing all that stuff to get ready to go to do, to become an adjuster. And then you've got like a lot of knowledge, like a huge amount of knowledge that's really going to help you on any interior damage claim. If you go work for a water remediation yes. company. And if you, you know, people are like, well, I really just rather do daily stuff at home. Well, if you had zero experience as an adjuster or zero construction, but you did one or two years at a water remediation company, they will put you on daily claims because absolutely, you know, at least, you know, 
you you at least have seen like the the biggest piece like that's the very first thing that happens on on a on a typical water claim and that is those guys coming in and tearing out the cabinets and the floor and the you know flood cut and all that stuff um and you'll know how to do all it because so, you may have to write that estimate as the, the first adjuster and then you just have to write the restoration estimate on top of that so right i don't know dion could be a way could be a new way it, well that that's what i love about this field there's no one set progression chart yeah you know in the military we had we had you know a chart you know if you do this we'll get you promoted to this and then here and then here and then retirement and whatever in the IA field, I don't believe we have that because everyone's situation is going to be different. Everyone's geography is going to be different. Their ability to travel will be different. Their experience is different. Uh, one, uh, a couple of things I would say, uh, you'll be building your rep, uh, your reputation and your resume simultaneously. And yeah. I've seen and heard stories where people will embellish yeah, resume yep. to get hired on, and they find out real quick when you hit the field whether your your paperwork was true or not true. Yep, because yep. you know you can don't do that. That's it's an important. Yeah, go ahead. It's not it's not worth it to you, to your family, or to the company that's taking a chance on you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that, um, the, the IA firms that I talk to, um, and it's not even so much that they'll say, well, this person was, was, you know, overstating their experience or whatever, what they'll say is, um, and maybe not purposefully, but they'll say, you know, well, okay. So, you know, applicant Jeff will say he's he's showing on his resume that he has an exactimate level two certification but we deployed him and he couldn't build a sketch in exactimate right so there could be a couple of reasons for that it could be that he he got the exactimate level two certification but some he let somebody else take the test for him so he cheated or he he took it 23 months ago and forgot right which is just as probably just as likely. Um, so that's another, that's another sticking point, um, that we've got in our industry. And that's something that, uh, and I've been talking about it a lot lately, but me and Chris Stanley from iapath.com, mm -hmm. we decided to come together and say, you know, based on what the IA firms were telling us that, that were their pain points with, with adjusters, whether they just, you know, were either overstating their experience or they just didn't have any experience. Um, they wanted a way to sort of vet adjusters. Um, so we came up with a way to kind of like, you know, like what you're, you're trying to do just as a, on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, we're trying to, we, we created something called an adjuster score that will help adjusters kind of narrow that path. Right. So it's, it's, and it's based on what the, the firms are telling us that they want adjusters to have, right. They really want adjusters to have New York license. Some firms told me they really want adjusters to have a Hawaii license, you know, but you got to have right. licenses, right? They really like Hague, um, certified inspector, you know, damage evaluation stuff, um, rope and harness, having, you know, good, you know, quality equipment, proving that you have it. Um, and then having, taking an exam, property exam or, and or an auto exam that tests the person's knowledge. Like they can get training, like say, for example, for you, you know, you may just need to like kind of brush up on your policy knowledge, but the construction right. stuff and exact and all the rest of that stuff you, you would have nailed. Like if, if you were coming into the industry fresh, um, somebody else, they go to, they go to a mile high or caddy or veil or Voss or whatever, and they take the test and it's going to test what they know. Right. And it's proctored, which means that, you know, it's a secure environment. Um, right. Somebody's watching them take the test and it's controlled. They have to, they, they can't just, you know, take it, say that they're taking it and then have somebody else take it for <laughs> them. Um, and that provides a level of like security for the adjuster um, to say, you know, this is, that's my real number. Right. It's not just like um, it's, it's can be trusted. And then for the firms, it's saying that, that's their real number, right? We, we know that, you know, this, this score that they got on their property exam, you know, they did really well on prop on the policy part and okay on the exact part and terrible on the construction part. 
does not pass fail, right? So that tells them, okay, well, we can work with this person. Policy is really, really important. Um, we can work with them on the construction piece and the exactimate piece. That's no problem. Let's get them on the roster, right? So it, it's it's something that um, we feel is it's not providing a mentorship necessarily, and they still have to go get the 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 training and the knowledge and and the all the experience and the the, the ride alongs and all that stuff on their own, you know. But we're gonna provide like kind of a narrow path, like saying here are the things that you really need to focus on. Forget all the rest of this stuff. Don't spend money on it. Spend your money here. Um, so we're hopeful that it's it's gonna you know that it's gonna it's it's gonna fulfill its promise. And I, 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 we've got the firms are all on board with it. So we're really excited about it, but that's kind of something that we're working on. Um, well, that sounds awesome. like a terrific assessment tool. And yeah. if you don't know where you're at, you can't figure out where you're going and how you're going to get there. These days, there are a growing number of remote work opportunities for independent adjusters with scoper writer programs popping up all over the place. You can do photo and scope in the field or you can just sit at home in your pajajays and write the estimates on what the scoper got when they were out in the field. And it doesn't matter where you live, as long as you have the internet, you can write claims as a desk adjuster, but you can't get that sweet gig without being licensed. So if you live in Nebraska, which doesn't require an adjuster to be licensed, you still have to have a New York license to write claims somebody scoped in New York, makes sense? Of all the credentials you need as an adjuster, there really is none more important than your adjuster license, especially your first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else, including some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. So you need Adjuster Pro. Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain your adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as an adjuster with resources for every licensing state, including dead simple CE packages. Adjuster Pro is the gold standard for adjuster licensing. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro right now. Having a, having a quality, um assessment tool which it seems like that's what you're describing yes that will help the individual it will help the firms it will save a lot of time a lot of heartache and a lot of burnout because if you yeah. get out on the first storm and you don't know what you're doing and you don't have a strong support system there's there's a high probability of burnout and not failure but non-completion <laughs> well, first let's, deployment. when you say high probability yeah. we're talking like i mean it's yeah you know high. 300 people show up and 15 of them 15. are left standing <laughs> <laughs> but, um, um, well, and that, just, that you hit on a couple things there sure. is um the negative the there is a lot it seems to be a lot of companies out there targeting new adjusters here by this, by that, you need this, you need that and everything else. Yeah. If yeah. you can get that assessment and you can work with a mentor, then you're head and shoulders above most of the people because you know what you already know. And it's, it's verified, it's validated. Here's what yep. you know. Yep. Now here's where you don't know you and your mentor can work together to get you that part of the pie and you can move forward. So I think that's a great tool that you're bringing to the table and I appreciate you developing that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's, awesome. that's, that's a uh, good feedback and we're, and we're, we're, like I said, we're very excited about it. So let's shift gears a little bit here and in kind of our remaining uh, minutes. And so you've been in the industry for five years, roughly um, based on your experience and where you've been, Maybe talk a little bit about where you plan to go going forward. Like, what does the rest of your career look like? Uh, the rest of my career is probably going to be another, as far as field adjusting. Sure. I may transition to file review or something uh, that I can do closer to home. Uh, but I'll probably do this uh, field adjusting on property for another five, six years ensure that um, I know my my son that I'm fixing to bring in has, has got a good start in it. I'll finish everything off. Uh, 
thank the good Lord. I've, I've had good mentors along the way. Uh, I'm practically debt free. I'm retired from the military. My wife's got her career retirement funds all set up and this is bringing the pie all together. Uh, and it's a great, this, I wish I'd have known this was a job back when I retired in Oh, Oh four. Yeah. Because I went straight into this. Uh, unfortunately I didn't. So I'm coming into it kind of a late bloomer and I probably won't be climbing roofs when I'm 65. So, you know, maybe another six, seven years and then transition into another way to where I can help with the process of adjusting, but maybe not be climbing roofs. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, believe me, it's, there's a lot more in this industry than just climbing roofs. Um, yes. That's kind of the, it's, it's a great way to get into it. And it's a great way to, you know, you can really, it's just like anything else. Um, but it's, it's, it is dangerous and it does, it, it can wear you down a little bit. Um, but so, um, let's see, what are the, you know, your questions or anything, Dion? Well, um, a couple of parting thoughts, perhaps. Sure. You're in this industry. Customer service is number one. You can be the best adjuster out there as far as writing and drawing and everything else. Don't have customer service. It's going to be very hard to succeed because that's one of the large grades that you get. And believe me, insurance talk to your insurance companies and they get feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. So work with your contractors. The contractors out there are not your enemies. They're there to do their job. You're there to do your job and you're both there to take care of the insured. So don't work on your customer service skills. Don't fight with the contractors. Everybody's got a job to do. Everybody should be making everybody else's job easier. Yeah, and don't amen. fall for the negativity. There's a lot of negative out there. Yeah, don't fall for it. There's good and bad in every industry. Be one of the good ones. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know it's just to just to kind of piggyback on that a little bit. I mean, it's it's social media. It's it's so hard to to. It's, it's, if we have a, we have a Facebook group for adjuster TV, um, you gotta like ask to join it or whatever, but it's, it's, uh, um, we have pretty much a zero tolerance policy for people who are cranky or have a bad attitude or who will, <laughs> if somebody comes in and says, um, cause this, and this is something I'd seen in other, other Facebook groups and other like, you know, online chat forums or whatever, where somebody would come in and say, Hey, you know, I just got my Oklahoma license and I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm really excited. What, what should I do next? And then they get dog piled on by everybody telling them to get out of here. You know, there's too many adjusters. There's, you know, you're, you're, you're going to fail, you know, your, your mom wears combat boots, <laughs> so on and so forth. And those people get kicked out of my group. Like the first time it yes. happens, they're out because it's zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. So there's, cause there's always new people coming in. Um, they have that, they're all going to have that same question. I will keep answering that same question as many times as it's asked because right. um, I chose to do this um, to help people. And if I'm just going to like, you know, go only so far and then like reach my the end of my help and just tell everybody, you know, ah, well, you know, you know, do use the search function in the group or whatever. It's like, just answer the question. Right. I mean, it's, it's, I seen one the other day said, you know, today you can Google just about anything. This is yeah. just answering the question. There's no need in that. And no. don't be afraid. If you know somebody's got a good heart, somebody's willing to work hard, and they've got a good work ethic, if you know them, don't be afraid to hook them up with your contacts at your adjusted firms. It's going to, if especially if they work out, that's yeah. just another feather in your cap. Yeah. It talks to your character. They're not going to take your paycheck. No. They're going to help you. Because the more people know you're willing to do the right thing, that's the kind of people they want working for them. That's exactly right. And okay. and just, you know, that's a really important point, Dion. Um, there's not a surplus of adjusters out there. In fact, it's the opposite. We have something that we're kind of referring to as a talent crisis right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think this has, it's it's got a lot to do with 
the, everything that's happened in the last couple of years, um, where even Taco Bell has a talent crisis, right? Everybody's there's a, there's tens of millions of jobs out there, and people just aren't taking them. Same things happen in our industry. Um, so if you can bring quality people to a firm, and they like you said, they work out. I mean, that's 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 a that's a big deal, and it gives you a little bit of like, you know, sort of credit, you know, points in your credit column as an adjuster there, especially if you're you're somebody that's that's reliable and does a great job as well, um, then you become a resource, right? Um, because, you know, a lot of times as, as, as adjusters, right, we're sort of ambassadors for the industry. Like we, somebody can, you know, you could be talking to somebody at a bar or at a party or just, you know, over the back fence or whatever. And, you know, talking about what you do and that person can be like, oh, wow, tell me all more about that. I want to get into that. And in your mind, you're looking at this person and you're like, There's no way in the world <laughs> you would be any good at this you know i i will like yeah you know, sure yeah i'll you know maybe we'll, i'll get let me put something together da, 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 put, but no i'm not gonna send that person to the companies that i work for and say you know here's here's somebody new and then they make a gigantic mess for whatever reason now, who i don't even couldn't even speculate on why but if they don't work out for whatever reason right. um but you find somebody that does like i I've, i have more than one occasion and like i'm sure you have too and really anybody experiences watching this can be talking to somebody and be like you, you know what you'd be great for this let me let me get you on the phone with you know i'll do like kind of a warm introduction to my you know the person i always talk to at my company and, uh, you know, I'll tell you what to do to get started. So then you like kind of take them under your wing and I, but I'm very selective when I do that. And most of the people that I have done that with stayed in it for a long time and did really, really well. Um, so yeah, 100% Dion, that's a great point. Yeah. Any, fi any final pieces of advice you got for new folks? <laughs> I've, I've had several people approach me about get, becoming a property. I during construction or, you know, some other field that's related. And <laughs> believe it or not, I tell them to go to your channel and look you up and is this job for me? Yeah. Because it's not for everyone. It's not for the weak of heart. It's not for the, you know, the people that want to work from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and go drink at the bar or do whatever or go sit back and watch their TV. That's not yeah. for you if you're going to deploy so if they're if they don't do that if they don't meet that first assignment and then come back to me i don't chase them because evidently they don't want it yeah yeah great advice well listen dion i really appreciate it thank you so much for coming on adjuster tv and sharing your wisdom and this has been a really really great conversation and i again i want to thank you for you know for being candid and uh and and having a heart to want to help out new folks um because it's you know we we're we are seriously like have a, a serious like you know personnel problem in our industry so thank you so much absolutely thank you for having me on and i want to give a big shout out uh to mark forsey in harrison arkansas he's my mentor he's the one who got me started he's the one who's kept me in it and i appreciate him so much and awesome. i appreciate you Matt. Yeah, no problem, man. Well, maybe next time I'm down at the White River fishing for brown trout, we'll uh, ping you. Yep. All right, sir. All right. Well, thanks so much. And we'll catch up with you Thank later. Thank you. This is Adjuster TV. I just got my doctor's test results, and I'm really upset about it. Turns out I'm not going to be a doctor.